Hi there, Robin here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a microphone with a mixer connect to Audacity to replace the audio that you see on that camera right there. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do I do that? We're gonna go through all the three major steps you need to take, which is one, recording audio, and it doesn't have to be on this microphone specifically. It could be on anything from a lapel to a condenser, whatever you have, that as long as you get good audio from, you can replace it. As long as you can get good audio, into a mixer or an audio interface, or in this case, I'm using a mixer with an audio interface, connected to my laptop. So right now I'm actually recording the screen of Audacity right now, because afterwards we are gonna show you the important three, four steps maybe, that you're gonna wanna take in Audacity to improve the overall audio quality. Then I'm gonna show you on the software that I use, which I'm currently using Vegas to do my video editing on. Now I have used Hit Films in the past. I also have DaVinci. I've tried them all. I, I do like trying them, but I've learned that you get good at something and as long as it's right and it does what you need it to do, stick with it. The best part about this video is, is that what we're gonna do is generally gonna work on all of them. It's it basically a little bit of understanding on how it works and we'll be able to use that on any of the software program because I go through the same steps on all of them. So here's where I'm going to show you what's going on. On the actual Audacity software program you're looking at right now, you are looking at everything that's important. Now, you're seeing a good meter reading on top. Why? Because here's my actual sound card plugged in, I only need to have it at 50%. I'm trying to achieve a good volume level. Now you can tell when I'm off microphone because if I'm off microphone, it's gonna show up here. So if I pull away a bit, it's gonna back down a bit and come off a little bit, a little bit. Now the important part is, is I'm gonna keep this segment here as is. But what I'm gonna do with the actual audio that you just heard before, is we're gonna run through some little extra steps we're going to go and get rid of the background noise. So that's very important. We're gonna to need to sample the end of the audio recording. So right now I'm gonna be quiet and keep a part of it. So this way you can see where the actual audio recording sample is gonna come from. So this is gonna be at least six seconds long and it's gonna happen now. And there you go. So that's gonna be my sample. That's the audio sample that I'm gonna to use to be quiet in. That's pretty straightforward. That's the part where I'm gonna use that and be silent during that audio recording. That allows me to have a reference point. Now, normally I have that at the end because at that point I've become tired. The noise maybe have changed in the actual studio, but today I purposely left the air conditioning running in the background and I've left the fan that kind of tries and controls the airflow in this space a little bit. I've left all that running. Now, why is that important? Because we're gonna be able to hear that in the background when I'm not talking. I'm gonna use the feature that you're gonna see on the screen right now, which is going to be the actual software program built into Audacity, the effects. It's called noise reduction. I'm gonna take a sample of that noise reduction, which is gonna be the six seconds. Then from that point, I'm going to be able to apply it to the entire audio track. Now I'm being selected because I do wanna leave a sample of it open for you so you can hear how noisy it actually is. So now that I've taken an overall sample of what's going on, I apply that actual filter to it. There you go, there's me applying it. And now we're on to the last step of the whole thing. So now we're on to the next step, which is basically looking at the actual overall audio level. I'm looking for any bad spikes. I'm looking for any part where maybe I've, you know, uh, did something or said something that really shot the actual volume of the mic all the way to the limit. So I've overmodulated and it shows up as little red dots across it. And I'm going to make a sample of it right now so this way you can see what I'm talking about. There you go. There's a big red spot right there. That's me right in on the mic. That's all bad stuff. I'm going to get rid of that. So I purposely used that portion to really make a lot of noise in the microphone, really got heavy on it. And that's what it sounded like. So we do, we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna use the built-in uh, amplified adjustment, which is gonna allow me to reduce any of those bad parts and bring them down. So this way, you know, I don't have to worry about it. I'm probably gonna replace that audio out anyways. So no worries there. Any audio that you're stuck having to keep, well, you're gonna have to work on it a little bit more. But for this video's sake, I'm just gonna reduce out the bad parts, bring them down by at least three, three and a half dB. That's gonna soften it all up. 
what do I need to do now is I need to equalize. I need to bring up all the audio because sometimes I'm a little bit further away from the microphone. Sometimes I'm a little bit closer to the microphone. So the next part is going to be me using the actual compressor. Now you can see I'm basically highlighting all the tracks that I want to keep and applying the compressor to it. Now I keep the actual defaults in the system. It seems to work out really well for me, but again, you can spend time tweaking on it. That's up to you. So once I have the compression, you'll notice that it's a lot, the, the entire audio track is a lot fatter. Everything in the middle has gotten louder and everything at the top has kind of stayed the same or brought down a bit. This gives us much more consistency through the entire audio. That means if I'm leaning back from the microphone or I'm talking heavy on the microphone, it's all gonna appear the same. My audio is gonna come across much better that way and you're gonna hear the lower audio much clearer. So now all that's left is to save the audio. Now we have the actual audio that we're gonna keep. This is gonna be the audio that we're gonna use on our video program. So, and here we are looking at the video editing software. This is a very exciting part because this is my actual software that I use to make the video. You're looking at a sample of what we're doing right now for this video and how we're gonna get it done. So I'll have my three main video files that you're looking at right now, which is the main camera in front of you, the one that's looking straight at me, my B-roll camera, which is off to the side, that's my GoPro looking at me from the side, looking pretty much at just the actual mixer. Then I have my top-down camera, which is gonna be looking straight down at the actual mixer. Those are all my actual cameras and they still have audio. I'm gonna line up that audio, all line it up nice and neat so this way everything, I use a point of reference. I try not to be right at the beginning. So I try and pick something that's really noticeable somewhere around the middle. Then I'm gonna go and make sure that my new audio, the audio that we're gonna keep is at the bottom and I'm gonna line all that up as well. So now I'm gonna basically have anywhere between three and four audio tracks all lined up to my best ability. I'm trying to get them within at least two or three frames of where they should be. These programs do have software built into it so it'll do it automatically for you. But again, you gotta practice with that and see how that works. But that's another video for another day. So here is all the actual audio all lined up on the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is now pick the actual start point or what I think is gonna be a start point of my video and I'm going to cut that video from top to bottom right there. That's it. Get rid of the stuff at the beginning. I'm not keeping that. That's just basically my roll in stuff. And now I'm going to start getting rid of all the audio in the middle. What we need to do is unlink or ungroup all those actual audio tracks with the video so this way now I can actually go in and delete out the audio tracks from the camera and then I can drag the actual audio that I'm going to keep and bring that all the way up to the top make it nice and tight so this way I can see everything. Highlight the whole thing create a new group a new package now everything including those three video files and that audio file are now going to stay linked together and now I have a nice clean audio to work with and there we go. That's everything. Now I just keep on going. I'm going to complete my video when I'm done. Yada, yada, yada. I'm going to do all the YouTube postings and all that. Everything else is all the same. But this is how I get from recording audio separately, cleaning up that audio to the best of my ability, adding it to my videos that you're watching right now, and then creating a final product for you to watch and listen to. So I'd like to say thanks for watching. Bye for now.